Stick around to the very end of the video to find out what's in this box. Hmm, I know. Hi guys, Retro Tech Ralph here. Anybody who watches the beginning of my videos, you see the scroll at the beginning. This is a, a big thank you. Every single video gets one. It's a big thank you to either the people who are Patreons or the people who donate stuff. If you want to be on there, please get in touch, donate something. It could be anything. It could be a game, it could be a computer system, it could be absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be so big a thing. Just get in touch, send it down, we'll do a video on it. This is from Chris. I've known him for absolutely forever. He's donated a BBC microcomputer data recorder, which also works on the Acorn Electron. Now, I think he gave, he brought down a game as well so I can test it on. I'm not quite sure if he actually brought the cable, the DIN cable, but I do have one, because these use either DIN cable or an earphone socket. I have plenty of earphone sockets around anyway. So we need to test this and see whether or not it works. It doesn't seem in bad, too bad a condition. You've got the weird handle. I'm either going to play retro games and and go around with a and hold it like a Walkman. But you can use this because it's got the speaker on the front as a normal standard cassette player. Underneath batteries, you take two or well, four to either side there. Of I think the C size batteries, I don't have any, so it will be a case of plugging this into the mains. Now, plug there. Let's see if this does anything. Right. Play. Oh. Okay. I was expecting, with this being as old as what it is, that it would have, quite easily, the, the band would have gone. I mean, you even got the... I've cracked as well, so that's... Something else needs cleaning up. The only thing I can see not working, well, actually, for some reason the tape counter will go backwards, but it won't go forwards. I don't know if you can see that there, let me get you in a lot, lot closer. That's on fast forward, and that's on rewind. So it's going by, it is dirty, but you can, you can barely make that out anyway. Let's see if I can get this into record. I mean, I do have a couple of cassettes around. Use press record. I think I was going to say the microphone's in the bottom corner of here, but I don't think it is. I think it's all just speaker there. But we'll have a look at that in a few minutes anyway. Chord level's not going up. That doesn't feel too bad as a as a volume of the tone. It was always important for the tone to be a specific. Tone, should we say. So, let's get into this, shall we? And have a look, see what's what. That'll be, obviously, a belt that's gone on one side, but I'm not quite certain. So, we have five screws. One, two, three, four. Hold on. One missing there. Four screws. So, what we need to do is get one of my pots. Available at any reputable Chinese shop. They're absolutely brilliant, to be honest. They're a nice size for things like this that are good what if you break them who gives them monkeys oh, that's two don't need that one I need a magnet to get these out I think that one there might be a different one I don't have a magnet to hand so what I have to do is tip it up and hope that there are four screws there that's the three corners so the longer ones, and that'll want to come out. Okay, they're all, they look like they're all exactly the same. Actually, no. The pointed ones go on the edge, and the flatter edge, oh, flatter one, looks like it's just been probably ground down or something, goes there. So it looked to me like all four are out. So that's, hopefully, oh, that won't want to come off. Nothing else I'm missing here. I think so. Okay, now the bottom comes off then. Uh, ooh, 
it hasn't been open for a long time. Let's get rid of the handle. It's just a, a metal bit with a little notch there which stops it from fully falling out. Aha! Right, tweezers on standby. So we have the power in. Looks a little bit dirty. We can clean and things up if not. Transformer, which will transform this down to maybe 5, 9 volt. I don't know. Actually, this is 6 volts anyway, so that'll transform that down to 6 volts. The belt, surprisingly, is actually not too bad. Which is quite weird. Inside, where's the counter? The counter will be up here. A little bit of cobweb on here. Yeah. So there's actually supposed to be a microphone there. Why isn't there a microphone on? Maybe it's part of a, a model up from this. I'll get you zoomed in a little so you can look at inside of this. In case you're ever stripping one of these down yourself and need to know what's inside. So top, bottom, right, left. So when I'm not going to do it on the circuit board, maybe a little clean up, but it's old fashioned wires and very wide traces. Standard cassette deck, plastic, metal, motor. It does actually seem to work all right. We're taking these two out. It's even a bit of a clean, so there's a screw there holding all of this in. I don't want to go too deep in it. It's, yeah, there's a one between there and there. That's a capacitor or something, but it's not. Okay, cool. So I need to strip down a lot to try and get to potentially the belt. Now, I didn't actually buy, and I was hoping that I got the right stuff, and I haven't. It was a um, Acorn ALF03 tape player and belt for the... Which I can't understand why it's going rewind, but it's not going forward. Now, to start with, the new one's a lot thinner. But this is because this isn't an ALF03 kit. They don't sell these anymore for some reason, so we'll, we will just keep that as is. It's not bad, it's not really stretched that much, but it just doesn't feel like it's... It's got a few more years worth of life in it, I think, So, but there's nothing much I can do. I have to keep that as it is. Um, the belt is probably the right size. I might change it, but I might not. It needs a flat one because of this large drum over here anyway. It will fit, but I don't know. We'll try and put the the actual um, counter belt on there if we can find it. So there we go, that's what's inside the Acorn Electron BBC cassette player. Right, what we need to do is start stripping down. I think start off, we'll take off here. There's one for the motor there, because that's on the chassis. Maybe I can keep that on there then. So I can take everything off the plastic. So there, there, and there's one up here as well. I can't see there's in the way there. Definitely the motor because that's attached to there. All right, let's start dismantling a little bit, take a few screws out and see where I go. Right, the relevant screws have been removed. At the moment we're working fine. There's absolutely no need to do anything over the top. I might look at capacitors and see if there's any problem with them on their own. Right, the screws you take off is definitely one there, one down there. A little bit tricky to get to with the circuit board still in place, but you can remove the circuit board by this screw and I can't see any others, which is a bit odd. Should have been on the one there, two there. So that should just move out of the way a little bit anyway. I wouldn't do too much. One screw holding this side of the speaker in, two screws holding this metal, little metal plate in which goes over the top of the meters. One screw in the middle of here, between the both the tone and the volume, which also take off the sliders for the volume control anyway, then that will come out. So four screws on that, one screw there, two screws there, one screw there. Yes, yes, I've actually found, I, th I assume, this is what's left of the belt for the counter. See, this is what happens with them, they get a little bit, um, yeah, old. We all get old eventually, and this is kind of a bit of black on my finger there. This is kind of turning in back into oil. It's quite weird what they do. So now I've got oily fingers for the rest of the um, video. Great. So let's try and lift out. I want to lift out, but I don't want to completely destroy, so I might just lift it onto the top there, and I don't want to dis disturb the, th the cables there. I could potentially 
slide out and undo these, but then I need to unsolder these. Yeah, let's just try and do it that way. Right, what I've also found as well is, once you lift it up, here, this part right here, sliding up bit for the cassette, cassette door, it's holding it all in place. So just lift it up a little bit, slide up, and then lift. I want to be trying to be careful. I've not got a reputation of being really, really careful, but I do know a little bit how to solder. But we're always learning. There is a tape player. Right, I want to do with this. This needs to go in the wash. Definitely, because of mainly that little scummy mark down there. I need to get that properly ragged off. This is what I asked to Chris to start with. Do you want me to fully retrobrite it? And he was like, no, not really. But then you look on here, these are scratches. This has been painted. So I said, well, do you want me to spray paint it? I mean, I could probably remove this easy enough as a propion, let it soak in, remove that part there. The auto stop would go and vanish, and so would the volume. He says, no, just clean it up, make sure it works, and, and, and we're done. So it would be a shame to lose certain things, but that's going to go in the wash. I don't think I want to wash the base. I can get away with that with isopropanol, but that definitely needs doing. So let's have a look at this way around on here. Okay, seems like the socket's there fine, socket's there fine. Right, so why won't this go backwards? Is the question. I don't really want... That's not touching there, that's not touching there, that's not going to there. So the only part... Okay, so where's that rubber section gone to? Where's it go? Hmm, maybe it's just a small washer then? It's been mandled around a little bit and I can't figure out why. It'll come to us eventually, I'm sure. So this is all just scum and build up over the years, over the decades. It's been in storage with. I don't know if, because that's, the, the kit definitely came with, yes, I know it's the wrong one, but the smaller one does work. So I don't know why this won't, Mines won't go backwards. That goes round, but it doesn't. The main motor is over here, which is then pulled over. Hmm. Okay. Right, first job's going to be get rid of the magnet off there. And start cleaning bits up. I can tend, I can take this plate off to make it a little bit easier to actually clean behind here. But I think we'll start off with cleaning the top. I'm going to clean the top and then these two sliders. I want to get some clean parts on here anyway. Then I can clean the bottom with some isopropanol, get that nice and clean. So we're, we're actually working from not a, a dirty, dirty, yeah dirty at a device. I can also clean that as well. I can blow that and I can rub that with a toothbrush. Nothing over the top with that. Just wants to get rid of all the grease and the, the fluff and stuff to make this a little bit better. So give me 20 minutes to get this thing washed. Well the clean is done. It's not absolutely perfect but it's way better than what it was. The um, set deck top. I'd be happier doing something with this because all the, the markings on here are the layer of paint that's come off. I'd be happier stripping the paint off and getting down to the original plastic, but I'd lose that and I'd lose that. And these. No, I'm just going to give it a, a... It's been loved for a while, shall we say. It's been used and abused and, and whatever. So damn good clean is all this thing I'm just going to go with. Plus, I've noticed something, right? The counter, you only need one belt, don't you? It's just me being a bit stupid. You press play and the gears engage on here for the motor to turn this one round here. You go rewind, engages the motor over here to engage this to go backwards <clears throat> and forwards, well, backwards, to rewind the tape back onto the spool, which makes the counter go round. Fine, but I assumed there was something else and this part here really threw me. And I've not fully figured out what it is yet, but here's my theory. 
is when you start rewinding of playing forward that one's going to go around but also that's going to go around as well moving the counter forward like an idiot there's nothing wrong with it so everything's had a gamble clean inside Get a little bit more in there it's just a heck of a lot better than what it was so all I need to do is now reassemble maybe put a head cleaner on there I think yeah I'll put some propanol on the back of I've already got some on there anyway I've been cleaning other bits So squeaky clean. That's the record head to the left. Playback head. Maybe I could get this cleaned as well. Everything doesn't look bad at all in here. I mean, it, this is very much similar to when I did the um, the reel-to-reel -reel recorder. It was absolutely caked in oil, but it was probably best it being caked in oil. So then you don't have a problem with it later in life. So heads are cleaned. They're fine, just need to test it, we've put it back together and test it. I'm thinking that this <clears throat> is a rubber washer, which went on something, and I think it's already been fixed. So the washer must have fell down in here. And I can't see where it goes. There are three holding the motor in place. So I don't think it's that. But it doesn't look like it's it's fully essential. It could do without it. So I'm going to remantle this, put it back together again, and just need a damn good clean. All screws in for this part. It is a damn shame that I couldn't put a microphone there. I'm not sure exactly where on the board I actually solder it to, but it must be for the upgraded, the next model up, obviously, or something. So you'll be able to record by that instead of just the head. But it can't be much difficult, I'm sure, but it's not what I'm doing anyway. So screws back in, one, two, three, four, Two over here, one in the center of there, and one clamping this down. I'm not going to put any hot glue like they did back in the 80s and 70s. It's perfectly fine for what it is. And that's back on there. Plastic's nice and clean. All I need to do is make sure there's no cables anywhere near where I'm going to be putting the screws in. Just five. And flip that over, making sure that is out of the way from there. So I know what I'm like. Also, the bar. Before you put that in properly, put the bar in. These little notches here will allow you to pull out and it will just stop on that notch. So you need to put it in and just let it rest inside. Because then it'll go as far as just knocking against the plastic. Well, the plastic bits are fine, you're okay. If not, then you have problems. Not big problems, it's fine. Right, the screws I've got now, I've found two other screws. I've got a funny feeling that the old-fashioned screws are the problem. Old-fashioned as in not massively old, but I think the metric. So that means that they're, the, or they're, they're imperial, should I say, not metric. That means they're just a tiny bit smaller. So my normal screws don't fit, but I've got one. I want to try now, but I want the other screwdriver. It's not a million miles of a rounded head, it's it's slightly th longer on the thread. It's more of a wood screw, but these are kind of a hybrid between both wood and plastic. Not have too much. That's not holding in place properly. Almost. Just gotta be careful with these plastics. Don't want to break them. That'll do. That'll do for me. Right, so the other one, the wood screw one. Flat head would look silly anyway, but get rid of that. Have I forgotten anything? And so far, I don't think I have. So four screws in, all nice and clean. Some screws will go directly straight in, if not just a little flick the other way, just to get it back into its original threads. Oh, that's spot on. Now, where would I be if I was a battery compartment? Oh, we'll be over here. Yeah, so down, on, sorted. Happy. I even replaced the belt on here anyway. I've not replaced the main one. I didn't think it was possible. It was actually needed. So, slide that in place. Slide that in place. That feels a lot better. There's certain bits on here, like on the side of there's a bit of paint scuff. 
I might be able to, to scrape that off with a plastic scraper. I might not be able to. I won't use anything more abrasive than this, otherwise it'll just damage it. It's not going anywhere, is it? Okay, we're gonna have to leave that for another day. Water underneath that, no. So I'm not bothered about that bit. Right, what I need to do now is get this, get the um, electron out and start testing. To see whether or not this actually works properly or not, or if I've actually looked this cock things up completely. On a final note, before I bring out the, the electron properly, the original owner, this piece of paper was in here. I think it was attached somewhere underneath or maybe at the bottom. Probably there it's fell off. Yeah, I'm not gonna put it back on there. I'm actually gonna thread it inside so any future generation can see exactly who owned this before. I, mean, I don't think I need my name in there. It's nice to put somebody else's name on a project. That is nothing fancy. It's in there. A little bit of a cover as well. So if anybody takes it to pieces, they know who it was. Everything's set up, the acorns is literally switched on. Chain, inverted commas, well, commas, commas. That's in. The problem I have is this needs more work. It looks a lot better. Yes, there's bits of paintwork, but it's, it's a lot better than what it was. It is showing what it's doing. It's not plugged in, but I'm trying to get the speaker working. It is... There are times I can hear something. But barely. You hear all the crattle interference and stuff. I don't know whether it's down to the earplug or further on the board. This is the part I didn't have the um, the guts to actually take to pieces because it's a there's a lot of old wiring and stuff. So I mean, just taking there's something there that does actually move instead of being just stuck there. It it does go further up, further down occasionally, but it's. It's definitely not. I mean, it could be just, just a case of the um, slide, potent, slide pot on there, just actually being, that's finally gone. Might want fully strip it down and cleaning. I can do that. If it's something on the board which is behind here, yeah, I can do that. I need to investigate more. Everything does seem to work. So something's all right. I actually thought it might have been a case of move the head around. I'm going to back a tip. That's a short game. I thought it might have been just a case of move the head, put the screwdriver in there, nice little small one, find the screw, turn it around, which then moves one side of the head up and down, but it's not that. That's the problem at the moment. So. No. And there is, it is detecting something's going on, but at the moment, it's gonna be a project for another day. So I need to strip down, do things, and let me drop that on the floor, and see what I can do in the future. So the present, it's a worker, it's a clean, nice clean worker, but it's not actually fully for purpose at the moment. But I've actually got other spectrum, um, yeah, electron games coming out pretty soon anyway. I need to do a review on this thing. I've had this for absolutely ages, probably well over a year. But since I have the card slot on there, we can play games that way around. And I also need to see whether or not the card slot properly works with my only, yeah, my only cartridge. I've got a few tapes, but I've got no cartridges. So I need to get on with stuff anyway. So in this case, this is just a basically a tear down, a clear out of the BBC microcomputer system data recorder. So with that in mind, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, follow me on social media, and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye for now. And as promised, here is the box. This is what Chris sent in to me. 
I did say before about if you want to donate to the channel that if you get in touch, description, uh, email, Twitter, Patreon, yada yada, if you want to donate something physical, get in touch. Or, in his case, he sent a box down because I do know him personally and he's not far from me. And he put this through the letterbox and it's sweets. Some bananas, dolly mixtures, some ice cream cones, jelly teeth and lips, and some rainbow buttons. Thanks, Chris. We'll be eating them very soon. <laughs>